The Radio Whammo Breakfast. Talking politics with Russell Norman. Co-leader of the Greens, it is Russell Norman joining us this morning. Good morning to you, Russell. Good morning, Whammo. Well, coming into effect this week, the Emissions Trading Scheme, or ETS as everyone is calling it. Finally now, a price on carbon, a price on polluting. We're going to sort out this uh, global warming problem this week in New Zealand. Good news, Russell. Uh, well, it's uh, it's certainly true that a price on carbon is one part of the solution, but it's, of course, only a pretty small part of the solution. Okay. Well, that's a good step, though, this week, wouldn't you say? ETS coming into effect, big time. Yep, yep. It's uh, it's important that we do bring the ETS in. Um, but the issue is that New Zealand has increased its emissions very dramatically um, since 1990. We're up about 25%. Uh, and so the, that's going to cost us because we've made international commitments not to do that. So we have to buy some carbon credits from somewhere else. And it's a question of who pays. Uh, so it's a question of whether the polluter pays or the taxpayer pays. Uh, and so the good thing about putting some of the cost on the polluter is that you create a price incentive around reducing pollution. Okay. And what's happened in our case? Uh, in our case, some of the cost is going on to the polluter, largely the consumer, um, the consumer of petrol, diesel and electricity. Um, a lot of the bigger polluters have got off uh, because they argue their trade exposed. So a lot of the original cost, the first cost will fall on consumers of electricity and petrol. Um, and, you know, the... the that will, you know, create some price signals, but they're they're pr- they're pretty small price signals at the mm-hmm. margin. Can you know, and compared on uh, some of the big fluctuations we've seen in oil prices, for example. So, um, so I, I drive a um, a small fuel consumption vehicle that is a scooter. I also try to turn off as many lights as I can at home and conserve as much power as I can. Yet I'm still being penalised with higher prices. Uh, well, whoever you you know, people that use less uh, electricity and less petrol will obviously pay less um, in terms of the price, which is the idea. Uh, so you using a scooter uh, will uh, obviously pay much uh, smaller amount uh, for the ETS than someone who uses a giant four-wheel drive, um, and that's how it should be, uh, because someone who drives a giant four-wheel drive obviously produces lots of greenhouse gases. There's something not working here for me, though. You know, like, there's still not an incentive. Obviously, the, the incentive is that you don't want to um, pay so much for electricity, so you lo- use less, or you don't want to pay so much for fuel. But there, there needs to be something else. There needs to be the fact that, well, okay, if I've um, planted a veggie garden out the back, you know, I'm not um, buying so many vegetables, therefore the, the truck that carries the vegetables isn't, you know, using up so much fuel to, to me because I'm, I'm using my vegetables from the back garden. There needs to be something, some, some other incentives in the system here. Um, there's there's different kinds of there's different kinds of issues. So there's the price incentive. Um, so obviously, if you grow veggies in the backyard, then you do get the benefit of the fact that you're not relying on the trucks to drive around um, because you know you don't have to pay for their greenhouse emissions. There's also the question of uh, the recycling of the revenue um, in the Green Party scheme. We supported a much simpler proposal, which was a carbon tax and then a recycling of the revenue generated. Um, which would then go into home insulation and things like that um, because we thought that was a much simpler and cleaner scheme than this rather complicated emissions trading scheme. Mm. Um, And so, you know, there there were much better ways to do this, uh, to have a price on carbon and recycle the revenue in a very transparent way. Um, Labor chose to go down the emissions trading scheme route. National's taken that up and have weakened it. Um, So it means there's some price on carbon. It's a bit of a messy system and it's not as good as it should be. Um, but, uh, you know, obviously having no price on carbon is, I guess, even worse. Yeah, a while ago um, you were saying that New Zealand are going to be laggards when it comes to uh, uh, yeah, yeah, global warming and, um, and, and nowhere near being at the forefront of, um, of movements to try and, um, and rectify the problem. Where, where, are, where are we sitting at now? Because, I mean, Australia is still dilly-dallying around, aren't they? Yes, Australia hasn't um, yet put a price on carbon across their economy um, but they have done a, a bunch of other stuff, but, yeah, they still haven't got a price of carbon. Um, the European Union, of course, um, has had um, the European Union Emissions Trading Scheme for some time, and they're moving into the third phase of that, um, which is kind of going further and further into their economy because they just started with the bigamiters. 
So um, we're certainly behind the European Union, uh, but, I mean, we're a little bit ahead of Australia, I guess you'd say. Um, we, you know, obviously we have distinct advantages as well because we already have a lot of renewable electricity generation. Mm. I mean, where we're probably lacking out is what people call the complementary measures, which are actually um, more important than a price on carbon, and that's things like fuel efficiency standards for imported vehicles. Um, if we put on a fuel efficiency standard for vehicles that's being imported across the border, um, we could have a dramatic impact on our greenhouse emissions um, because so much of it comes from um, transport. Uh, and so, you know, those kinds of energy efficiency standards, which are regulations rather than prices, uh, can make a big difference. And when are the farmers going to pay? Well, uh, at this stage, uh, it's not at all clear um, when, when at all. Uh, so far, they're not paying at all for the greenhouse emissions coming from methane and nitrous oxide. Um, like everyone else for their electricity and petrol, they'll pay some part of it. Mm. Um, but the, at this stage, it's not at all clear when they're going to come in in terms of paying for methane and nitrous oxide. Russell Norman, co-leader of the Greens, thanks very much for your time. My pleasure.